welcome back everybody to yet another live edition <laughs> of the DCL Duo <laughs> podcast. That's three lives in a week, I think, Sam, that we've been doing. Uh, so thanks for everyone out there who is who is watching. This was a last minute uh, live edition. Uh, I want to bring in a guest that we've invited to join us who was providing some just amazing recommendations, pure gold for Disney Cruise yes. Line around some of the pure theming that they wanted to see. Um, prognostications. Like, yeah. So let me bring in CT to the show. Welcome, CT. Hey, Sam and Brian. It's good to see you guys. It's good to, it's good see to be you. back good on the show. You. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Now, before we dive in, oh, I was going to tell you. Um, so, <laughs> CT, I see you brought your um, your your aluminum foil ears, and I just wanted to tell you that I also brought my <laughs> aluminum foil ears to the show. <laughs> In honor of you. Guys are you. killing me. So killing yeah, me. <laughs> CT uh, was was um, saying earlier today that of course, and he was channeling. He was using his his aluminum foil Mickey ears to prognosticate about the Disney destiny. I keep saying density in my head, like George McFly on <laughs> Back to the Future. <laughs> you, you are my destiny or density, he says. Anyway, but I had to, I, um, CT was mentioning over, uh, Facebook that he was, uh, and I think Twitter as well, that he was, you know, using his tinfoil ears. And so I had to make my own pair of tinfoil ears to wear. I meant... I meant to go downstairs and make myself a little tinfoil hat to put on, and I totally <laughs> forgot to do it. Uh, well, I totally, but, so I love this. I love this, you guys. Love this. We got you. We Everything got you. about this. I, I, love I love that, it. by the way, for those of you watching right now, this was not planned. Like, CT and I both did this separately, because um, even though it was a joke, we both obviously felt like we needed to take the joke to the next level and, and, and actually present our tinfoil ear, so... <laughs> Absolutely, a commitment. Yeah, I love that yours are also the traditional ears, and that mine are like you know the wait you the can't, mini. You can't just take them off. I know they're just yeah. Away. These are these are the the silver anniversary at sea. I I'll put I'll wear them. It's just they keep they fall off a little bit. So bear with me. I'm gonna wear them. I'll, I'll wear them for as much as I can stand them for the show. Eventually they'll come Look. off because they keep falling off. By the way, where well, I'm All right. well let's too. Let's welcome a few folks to the show here. Uh, uh, Tracy, watching again. I think listener, fan, uh, viewer number one here. Tracy, thank you so much. Uh, Ashley was laughing at your uh, at your ears, Sam. And uh, CT's ears, I bet. Yeah, Robin says, I'm finally able to catch a live show. Yeah, we had to push this one an hour earlier. Uh, our son is at uh, math camp right now, or math uh, after school enrichment right now. And so we're just trying to squeeze this in between, uh, between math lesson here. Uh, and... Uh, up oh, there's uh, there's Steve uh, Steve Elsis, a good friend of the show, who's saying "Ayo." Uh, oh, and we got Josh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, Tracy's oh, saying Tracy she loves, loves the ears. Yeah, she loves and the ears. others. Yeah, uh, so. Martha loves the ears too, and is excited to hear our thoughts. Others are just saying hi. Chris Kidder saying can't wait to hear your thoughts and speculation on the new ship announcement. Love it. Yep. Love that we've got Let's so get many to it. friends and, and watching. Rem reminded of those for you on Facebook, there is a way to give StreamYard uh, permission to see who you are so we can see who you are. But uh, so uh, thanks for watching over there on Facebook. All right. Let's get to it. There's uh, a... <laughs> I mean, it's just been a flurry of news out of Disney Cruise Line the, this past week with itinerary release and now the destiny. Um, why don't we talk through what we know uh, for sure and and sort of, you know, pick apart some of the announcement a little bit, uh, highlight a few things. Um, what I want to do is I have put together some uh, slides here from the official Disney Cruise Line announcement materials. Uh, so, you know, some of this is the the this is the artist rendering want to be very clear artists rendering of the mm -hmm. exterior of the disney destiny of the disney wish shocking with the name destiny yeah. on it <laughs> yeah i was gonna say well that's where i was headed with which is i don't see a lot of daylight between this ship and the treasure of the wish which I mean, frankly shouldn't be surprising this is the third ship yeah. in the wish class it's described as a sister ship to the treasure and the wish for all of you wanting a running track, I yeah, don't check out see that it running here. track. It's check out <laughs> yeah. the running track. It's the same as the one on the Wish. That's also going to be on the Treasure. We're going to have that multi where you have to go up two levels yep. to, to run around the ship. Now, um, now, now we should we should say these are art, again artist renderings. They're all subject to change. Uh, I I was trying to find the picture. They had a picture from the keel laying today. If you saw the amount of the ship that was actually 
done today. It's like one little section, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's not it's not anywhere near complete. Uh, but I'll also say, uh, we'll get to this in a second, based on when they expect to take delivery of this ship, I don't see a lot of room for like some major overhaul of the design of the ship at this point. So, uh, so this is the exterior, the artist renderings. I don't know, it, CT, did you catch anything out of these photos that caught your eye other than more of the same? So I didn't, the photos were more of the same, but here's what I'll say is I looked it up and March 30th, 2023 was when the keel was laid on the treasure. So I think yeah. we're looking at another Christmas launch for the boat based on the timing of today's announcement and hearing that the keel's been laid. I, I, wa- I want to believe, let, let's talk about the the actual sailing here in a second, because I do get to that ever so slightly. Um, let's keep rolling through what we what we know for sure here based on the announcement. Um, let me move this slide here if I can find the button. All right, there, there's the keel laying. There's Mike and Philip <laughs> with their keel coins. Gosh, I wish they I wish they would sell those on the I mean, I know they sell the ones encased in uh in the plexiglass or with a picture. I wish they'd sell the actual keel coins. I don't think I've ever seen them. Those are really cool. They look really cool. I know Sam desperately wants one I, because I one. because there she is with the S706. That's the the whole number for the ship at Mare Werft there. Uh but this is Sam's favorite part of the keel coin. This is Super my favorite mini. mini ever. I have to say, like I thought Captain Mini was my favorite mini ever. And now Hero Mini is my favorite mini ever. I like was always a big superhero fan when I was little. Like I was Supergirl for Halloween, a kid you not in kindergarten. Like, so for me, like super mini, like hero mini with a cape and her and her like skirt outfit that totally reminds me of Supergirl's outfit. This is like ultimate mini. Like I want, I want to yeah. be this mini when I grow up. Is that yeah. weird to say? Yeah. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're I, I'm also wearing already... tinfoil ears, so come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's let's keep moving. I I do love the Hero Mini keel coin. Uh uh so I I think that's great. I do wish they I just wish they would sell those. Okay. Yeah. Um that goes along with the new filigree for the ship, which we've got uh we got Minnie there in her cape. We've got, if you notice, Daisy Duck Daisy. here, it looks like, yeah. sitting. And we've and got Pluto Goofy and... surfing the wave. No, that's Goofy. We got no, Goofy. Yeah, we got Donald. Oh, yeah. But we you've got, got We got Mickey. Donald there, and we got Mickey. Yeah. And we have Donald. No, yeah, Mickey and Donald. You're right. Sorry, I was thinking that was Pluto, but you're right. It's Goofy. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So we've so got the, go. we've got a weird version of the Fab Five then, because it is, there's five of them, but when I say weird version, because Daisy is replacing Pluto. Daisy's not usually in the fi- Fab Five. She's the sixth. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, got a comment here from uh, Sarah saying, Adventurer Mini is still my favorite. So I do I like think Adventurer Mini. Mini is adorable, but for me, just my taste, this is Hero Mini is beats, adve- beats yeah. Adventurer Mini. I'm sorry. Well, I'm still going for hashtag Admiral Mini or Commodore Mini because uh, she needs a promotion <laughs> given how much she's involved in these ships now. All yeah. right, let's move on. All right, this is the announcement. This is where I think we can have more of a discussion. So uh, this is extracted right from the press release today. Uh, I'll read it for those of you listening to this afterwards at home. Uh, it's from Disney Cruise Line. It says, Disney Destiny will bring stories of legendary Disney heroes and villains to life. New Disney Cruise Line ship will draw inspiration from epic tales of Disney, Pixar, and Marvel. It says, Disney Cruise Line revealed the first details about its next ship, the Disney Destiny, as it reached a new construction milestone today with a keel-laying ceremony at the Meerwerft Shipyard in Papenburg, Germany. With the good luck garnered by this maritime tradition, this ship of legends and lore is beginning to take shape. The design theme of the Disney Destiny, sister to the Disney Wish and Treasure, will be heroes and villains. So that was the big news of the day, heroes and villains, drawing on the legacy of beloved Disney stories, characters, and theme park attractions to forge a cruise vacation that will empower guests to embrace their own calling aboard every unforgettable voyage. It then goes on to say that it will, uh, onboard guests will encounter heroes and villains alike, including those from beloved Walt Disney animation studio stories like the lion King Hercules and 101 Dalmatians within the spaces experience and entertainment throughout their voyage. So, um, there you go. The big the the guts of the announcement are right there. Big headlines, name of the ship, the destiny, heroes and villains theme. Uh and so and some names of some IP that is almost certain to be 
yeah. on board. Well, so not almost certain. Certain if they say it's going to be yeah. stories like that, those stories are going to be somewhere on board. They haven't said where, which is one of the things yeah. we're going to pro- start prognosticating about on this show. Yeah. The, the release goes on to say, as CT mentioned, the Disney Destiny is scheduled for delivery in 2025 as part of a multi-year expansion of the Disney Cruise Line f- fleet. So they're they're not <laughs> 2025. Anytime in 2025 is what they're sort of they, they did not specify early, middle, late, uh, which I think at one point they did specify late 2025 for the uh, the treasure. Or they 2024. They said 2025. Yeah. Yeah. Late 20, sorry. Late 2024. Yes. Um. Wanted to call out, they had a a video. We can't play the video on this show. We'll get copyrighted off of YouTube <laughs> if we try to replay their video and sound here. Uh, but I pulled a still for those watching later uh, of a comic book that started the video. And on its cover, it says Hero and Villains on the High Seas. And it's got images of Hercules and Hades, uh, Minnie Mouse, Captain Minnie, uh, Mustafa, or it might be Simba. That's Simba. Simba, actually. I that's Simba as an that's adult, Simba. yeah. And that's and Scar. Uh, who's the Scar. Scar. Yeah. And then we've got we've got Hercules interesting, we've got, and Hades. So well, I said that, which is interesting because oh, on the left it's like on the left it's the hero Hercules versus the villain Hades, and then uh, um, Mustafa. Sorry, I keep Simba. Uh, Simba versus Simba Scar. And Scar. But then you have Pegasus. You, who's from Hercules versus Cruella and DeVille. So that one doesn't make sense. They should have had yeah. uh, Pongo and Perdita there instead of, instead of Pegasus, but it's okay. It's all right. Cause I, yeah. I actually love yeah. Pegasus. I was super happy to see Pegasus featured in this video. The only and, thing better than Pegasus, let me just say this is baby Pegasus. Baby Pegasus is the cutest. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> baby Pegasus. Um, and then uh, the, Next thing that we got, if you watch the video, all of that IP makes it in. And then the next thing we've got uh, is a still of the this hallway with these ship doors on it that have um, character logos or insignia. Yeah, from Edna Mode for The Incredibles, uh, Pirate Skull and Crossbone for Pirates of the Caribbean. We've got Spider-Man and Black Panther from Marvel. And we've got uh, uh, insignia from Haunted Mansion. So with all of that, I'm going to rewind back and CT. Uh, let's talk first about timing. So what do you think about the timing of the ship? They're saying we, delivery in 2025. Right. But she, so but other announcements up, says set sail. Other, other announcements said set sail in 2025, even though this yes. one says in the video, it says set the, sail. And in another post, it says in the parks sail. blog, it says set sail. Yeah. Right. Yep. I think it's going to be the end of the year again. I think if they can avoid Christmas because of how bad the booking has been for the treasure, they may do that for an inaugural, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be the same window based on the timing of the keel laying. I think this also says that Disney's fairly confident that the treasure is going to be on time Mm -hmm. that they can look at, uh, you know, March of 2024 and know that by the end of 25, they can predict another ship is coming um, it's interesting that the name wasn't released during D23, which actually yeah. says to me, maybe we're going to have a full D23 and have an exciting one this year where they're going to talk about the adventure and um, potentially some of the other venues that are going to be on that we that I'm sure we're going to guess right today because we've got the tinfoil airs to That's lead the right. way, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're channeling you know, I, all I, of the good juju to know that we're going to guess right. Yeah, I, I want to say my reaction to so let's talk about the, the timing of the announcement today for a second because I think you're bringing that up a little bit, CT, with your comment, which is, I'll just say this, I found it odd to announce this in the middle of summer 2025 itinerary booking, right? So basically, they just released itineraries for summer 2025. Booking isn't even open to the general public yet for those itineraries. That won't come for another two days. They had the announcement today. I wonder how much that's going to hurt them on the summer 2025 itinerary bookings. Cause people will be like, well, wait a second. I might, I might wait. I might wait to see what you're going to do with this ship. Like when it's going to come out and save my money for that, that cruise, except I don't think this was a strategic error so much as I don't think they had a choice. Cause the keel laying was today. The keel laying is usually dictated by the build schedule. And once you have the keel laying, like the name of the ship's going to come out. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I think they had to do an announcement today, but I just wonder if the interplay of all of this means that those summer 2025 itineraries take a bit of a hit. I don't if know. I, what do you think? If I may, I think the answer there is that 
a Disney wanted to control the own narrative, right? It yep. lets them right for um, they want to own the news cycle when it comes to cruise lines and what's happening. I think it also motivates people to book the cruise on the treasure because of the, there are so many DCL fans that are completionist. I need to sail once on every ship. Yes. So maybe it motivates people. To I get have, into a I have no tour. idea what you're talking about. CC. <laughs> I, I don't yeah, even know yeah. what's that. <laughs> it motivates a summer 25 treasure cruise. I think so that's I'm ready true. the next summer or the next spring, late 25 to get on that next ship. Right. Yeah. I agree with you, CT. So to me, this is a bit of controlling the narrative, making sure to get out the name before the name leaks. Because obviously, as Brian mentioned, once you do the keel laying, the ship is named. So you've got to, the name's going to leak. So you've got to just take control and announce it. And then announcing the delivery, I I think you're right. It's about the completionists and sort of, I actually think it motivates people maybe not to book the other ships, but to book the treasure. I, I think it does, particularly for that summer 2025 when kids are not in school. It's not really going to affect significant, um, you know, Alaska sailings uh, because people who are planning on booking Alaska are planning on booking Alaska. It's not going to really affect Europe sailings because people who are going to book Europe are going to book Europe. With one exception, people like us who like like to sail too much, Um we've got a like budget for this. So this is something we weren't expecting to be perfectly honest. When we saw this this morning, not the announcement about the, the, um, the theming or the name, although we, we didn't know those were coming either, but the timing, it was a little bit surprising to us. We thought, uh, although as previously I, I announced I the think... ship was coming in, in 2026, but uh... I want to, well, I wait, 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 wait. I think the ship has been announced for 2025. So like, I don't know that we should have been surprised. I think it was announced for 2025. I think when they announced the adventure, we all speculated that it would get slotted in between the treasure and the destiny. Maybe. And and Disney's just sticking to its schedule. The the only other thing that I so the only other two reactions I had. One was I wonder if the adventure is experiencing some delays. <laughs> like if yeah. that was part of like like let's make sure this ship lands in 2025 uh because the, but but maybe not. Maybe they'll have the adventure come out, you know, shortly after that's a lot of maiden voyages for Disney to manage in a very yeah. short period of time. A lot of new ships coming into the fleet in a very short period of time. Um, the other thing that I reacted to just from a planning side of things, cause like Disney, you know, Disney is a planning vacation, right? Like you, and, and for cruises, you know, we said this before on the show, you can book other cruise lines. Like some of them are booked into 2026 now, right? Mm-hmm. Like most of them are, most of them are out to way past Disney, Disney's 2025 to Sam's point about planning. Like we just booked a princess cruise for Thanksgiving 2025. You know what? That's we might be canceling. Let me just say we might be canceling that princess cruise. (laughs) Yes. But can I finish my thoughts, Sam? Can I please finish my thought? Which is that cruise is on the princess star, which if you go look is not a ship that's sailing right now because it's still being built and it's due for delivery in August of 2025. But I can book that cruise today. So, like, I don't understand why Disney stays so tight-lipped on these itineraries because I would probably be like, okay, great. Now I can plan my 2025 sailing schedule, right? I can plan, and others can just plan their 2025 vacations, right? So I really wish they would, like, give some indication of when this ship is coming. I 100% want to agree. Please don't put it at Christmas time again so is there an element of the itineraries being the way that they are because disney can better negotiate ports and uh prices to get in places under contract without the hype of the ships coming out too early right i would like to think that based on how that works and how contracts work disney has already negotiated whatever ports these mm-hmm. ships are going to slot into at this point. Yeah. But by releasing the itinerary too early or that the ships are out the way that they are, they overhype it. And, you know, it's kind of like a, Maybe. we'll call it the Walt Disney Florida real estate effect, right? Like mm-hmm. if Disney had gone out there and said, hey, I'm going to open up a theme park here instead of buying up the land all real small Quietly. pennies on the dollar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is there an element? Disney's always been a very savvy company when well, it comes to the business side of things. Yeah. I mean, it's cer- it's certainly possible. Well, wait, gonna... wait, 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 wait. The port, ag- hold on. I was supposed to say the port agreements, I think, are negotiated 
like we already know today the the Fort Lauderdale Port Agreement for like the next five years. Like they negotiate these for long term. So like I don't know that that's because they've already committed to like Fort Lauderdale. I forget the exact terms, but it's like Port Canaveral has two large ships and one part time small ship, and Fort Lauderdale has one large ship, yeah. one part time small ship. Galveston has like so they've already signaled like kind of where the fleet will be positioned at the home ports. It could, I mean, it could be the destination ports, but something tells me the, like those are also negotiated well out in advance. So, I, I mean, look, all I'm saying is other cruise lines are able <laughs> to get this stuff out. And so I just like, and the planner in me is like, I hate that Disney can't, but anyway, let's, let's speculate on topics more fun. Wait, than, wait, more fun. Let's than this. talk about, let's talk about timing though, because this is something else that was that CT brought up, which is, and, and you brought up too, Brian, which is Christmas time. Like I'm going to go out on a limb and say, it's not going to be Christmas. I'm going to say it's going to be early. Yeah. Like Steve is saying, I'm going to say it's going to be earlier than Christmas. I have no idea how early, but this keeling is 10 days earlier than the, the treasures key laying. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say, maybe it's, you know, 10 days earlier than Christmas time cruise. So like a week yeah. before or maybe early December or maybe late November, right? Like I, I, I don't think a New Year's Eve maiden as Martha has commented. Uh, she thinks it sold better on the treasure compared to the Christmas one. Um, that I think just is a virtue of, different people's vacations and some people don't want to be like, they want to be with family for Christmas. I think that's less of an issue for new year's Eve. So I, I'm just going out on a limb and guessing it's either it's earlier in December or perhaps late in November. How great yeah, would the Steve synergy be if it were Thanksgiving day in New York city as the Macy's mm. day parade <laughs> with a Disney cruise float finishes the parade and go. then people go to get on the ship. That, that would be, would be amazing. A, we'll call or that even, a magical start to that. Yeah. I mean, they could even just do the christening then and then sail her down for her first cruises, you know, in early December, right? Like they could do the christening near Thanksgiving in New York. I mean, it sounds like they're going to be maybe doing the christening in New York or at least something in New York for the treasure. So maybe, um, yeah. Yeah. maybe that's exactly right because it's right. It's that would be a wish which is on brand for Disney for the wish, something that, you know, is a wish to be on the destiny or on the adventure to be on the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I want to throw up uh, Josh's comments for a second. So he says CT makes a fair point, but if they can't sell out the treasure inaugural sailing, why would you do another? Uh, I think that's around the Christmas timing issue. And then he mm -hmm. goes on to say, uh, with Disney raising prices and the wildly high inaugural sailing prices, I think regardless of when the inaugural is for the Destiny, it won't sell out. Um, it's a fair point. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Oh, and Steve Steve E is agreeing with me. Ten days earlier, carbon copy of a third ship when the materials ordered and planning done. Treasure's also slightly ahead of schedule. He's thinking so. He's saying November December twenty twenty five is his guess. Yeah. On tr although Tracy's pointing out. If they launch it and don't have a full uh, full uh, ship, then it's kind of a soft launch, and that makes it a little bit easier for them to do a maiden without uh, without the without the ship full. So I I, I mean I think that's true. Um, let's see if there are other comments about the timing. Uh, uh, Ashley's saying. Uh, Disney Disney can't or won't, Brian. I vote won't. I'm not sure what she's referring to there, but um, interesting, interesting points. Uh, so, I hope we're all right, but sometimes when the ship delivers, the ship delivers, right, Sam? Yeah. And letting it sit in a port is not in the best interest of Disney either, right? Like exactly. They want to get a crew trained, get you know, get the the kind of their their theater company on the boat, and they want to start moving because um, not only does the boat start to sit, but it kind of becomes perishable in the way that there's skills for it, right? Like you want to exactly. make sure the trained crew is in that rhythm. Exactly. And what they tend to, what they always do before a maiden, as we know from the wish and from the fantasy and the dream before it, of course, is they do a bunch of preview cruises, right? To give the cast an opportunity to essentially practice with a more, 
uh, easy audience. And when I say a more easy audience, I'm thinking like cast members and their families, sometimes Disney executives, and they do everything like a dry run. So the cast is on the ship and they're doing everything as a dry run um, without uh, real paying guests on board. And then they also invite, of course, travel agents to give them, you know, previews and even, um, you know, Instagram content creators, all of that without, uh, without some of the pressure of understanding that not everything's going to be up and running. But I think, you know, if they have the, uh, if they get delivery, they're gonna, they're gonna start her, uh, her sailing. So if they get delivery in November, they're not going to wait until, you know, January or until uh, new year's Eve to set sail. Um, yeah, Ho- hopefully everything is working on this one. I know you guys kind of talked about that with Wes earlier this week, right? Like hopefully yep. the the treasure lands and then the destiny lands and, uh, you know, that, uh, what's that augmented reality experience that's on the ship? I haven't been on the wish yet. Yeah. The but uncharted adventure. Working. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that is working day one for those. Right. And that yes. it's not the delay. Like there was a kind of a partial little mermaid showing I know early on and it took a while for them to get beauty and the beast going. Hopefully these boats hit the ground and the gears are just going, especially since for the treasure, it's going to be a seven. I'm hoping we're going to see something like that with um, the destiny. I hope that the destiny has some of those longer uh, uh, itineraries as well and hits the ground with everything working right away. Yeah. So that's a great topic to switch us to since Brian hasn't joined us back. So we can't look, I can't pull up the artwork right now, but let's switch to, to talking about what itineraries uh, we think that the destiny is going to sail. We have, let's put this out there. We have no information from Disney as to where the destiny is going to be sailing from sailing to and what itinerary she's going to be doing. So uh, let's just guess. We're putting on, CT was trying to put on his tinfoil Mickey ears. Um, and But CT, tell me, if you had your druthers, what, where, where would the destiny be sailing? And even if you, your druther, even if your wishes aren't answered, what do you think she's going to be doing? So I'm going to take a leap on this one. And I think it's time to make a boat, a full-time Pacific boat. Ooh. With the wonder. Now, I don't know if the new ship will go there, but the yeah. new ship may take up what the dream is doing and they move the dream to the West Coast. That's a good prognostication. I like that. Um, I, I'm going to say, I hope they do that, but I'm going to, I'm going to guess they're not going to do that. Um, and I'm going to guess that the treasure is, or sorry, treasure. I'm saying the destiny, I'm going to guess she's going to take over the wishes rotation and the wish maybe will move down to Fort Lauderdale and take over what the dreams been doing. I do think it's possible we could get a dream or fantasy on the West Coast. I think it's more likely we would get magic on the West Coast, but I I think it's possible, you know, dream or fantasy. We, as we talked about in the other the other night's show is there's some issue with the the height of the the dream and the fantasy of her mast and so um they may have to do some I mean maybe that's they'll do that in dry dock. I have no idea. But um but I think yeah, I think we're going to see the destiny take over the wishes three, four night sailings, and then wish rotates to Fort Lauderdale. It's like a, it's like a four, four, five schedule. And then some sort of random different lengths of cruises. Like it might go down to, you know, San Juan and do some Southern Caribbean stuff, but that, that, um, what the magic was doing and now the dream is doing out of Fort Lauderdale. That's just my guess. I think that getting a second ship over to the Pacific is in Disney's interest. Cause I think there's still a market to run Southern California as an itinerary uh, when the ship goes to Australia. And I think that there's some neat flexibility in maybe doing some California coasts by having a second ship out there when one is headed north and doing Alaska. So Vancouver South instead of Vancouver North. Now, uh, you know, I I just, I think Disney's always been really good at uh, adding itineraries in ships to do more for their customers mm-hmm. and creating more customers and more locations, not whereas some of the other cruise lines will just take a boat and depart every day from the same port, do the same four day itinerary. And there's just a relay going of four boats and they're, they're in different spots on the four different days or three different days of a four day set. I just, I, I like, uh, I like this ship 
maybe not being on the West Coast, but creating an an opportunity for there to be a second boat over there. Yeah, I love that. Um, so just to, I'm going to, I'm going to read the comments. I can't bring them up cause I don't actually have the control over the, the stream right now, but basically, uh, Steve E is saying shorter sailings and the treasure maybe takes over for the three, four night wish. Uh, Sonia is also agreeing with you hope, hoping for West coast, um, but as just to be clear, what what CT and I are prognosticating is not that the new ship is going to the West Coast, uh, just that it it creates the opportunity for uh, West Coast. Um, uh, and Ashley's agreeing that would be great. Uh, Josh, Daily MTB writer, is saying, I'm going to say they'll keep the wish and treasure out of Port Canaveral, but this one will go somewhere else. He doesn't think they'll make a full time West Coast ship as it seems to be a tough market. And then. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, Steve is saying, I don't believe a new ship save for the adventure would ever be anywhere, but Port Canaveral. And I'm agreeing with that. I really, the new ship is going to be out of its flagship port, Port Canaveral. And that's why we'll, we'll see them move around other ships to accommodate different ports. Um, and Josh is also saying again, I think more likely five night cruises out of Fort Lauderdale, New Orleans and Galveston. I, I think that's a possibility but again, I think that's a possibility more for the wish if the destiny takes over uh, its takes over the wishes um, wishes itineraries right now. All right, well, let's move topics since Brian is back. Brian, let's we we the only thing we covered Wait, without I don't you. Com- I don't get to I don't get to comment <laughs> on itineraries. To, where Next where did we land on three four nine versus? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where, where 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 did you land on three four nine versus seven night? Uh, we land, I mean, my prediction is three, four night cruises out of Port Canaveral and w- and wish rotates to Fort Lauderdale. That's, I mean, that, and NCT mm. agreed with me, but we're both hoping that what this does is free up one of the other ships, whether it be the magic or dream or fantasy to head over to be sort of full time on the West coast. So that when the wonder goes across to, and does the Alaska season or goes across and does the, the South Pacific, uh, Australia, New Zealand sailings, we've got, a, we still have a ship on the West coast. So um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's really the issue. And, and Steve is bringing up a great point, which is theme is bigger than location or theme is greater than location. They can justify demand initially and then rotate out. Right. So you don't need to have your newest ship at some really cool destination. You put her into your, you know, your Nassau castaway rotation because the stuff on the ship is the draw not the ports. And so that's what it was with the wish. That's what's yeah. going to be with the treasure. And that's what it'll be with the destiny. So there's a Facebook user yeah. that just popped in there that said, maybe the maiden uh, will sell out if the destiny replaces the wish. I think that's a really good point that those high priced maiden voyages do very well. If it's a three or a four night, as opposed to being a seven night, like the treasure is trying to get people to do right away. I think, I think there's a oh, really although, good point although, there. Although the maiden although for the wish was a five t- night. Yeah. Yeah. Five night, yeah. yeah. So they're typically you, they do a little longer short. sailing as yeah. like a bonus. Yeah, yeah. I, my yeah. guess is it, even if she takes over the wishes rotation, it's not going to be a seven night maiden, but it would be more like a five night maiden, or or may, perhaps a four or six night, right? Like it's probably not going to be a six night though if she or seven night if she's taking over the wishes three four rotation. So yeah. that that's Let, true. It is. It'll be a lower cost slightly. Now we got to talk theming. Let's talk theming. Yeah, yeah, let's talk theming. So look, we we know Hercules and Hades are going to be central to this ship. I, I think based on even how the little video played out, I mean, the real battle was Hercules and Hades. So Chris, you you had absolute gold on uh, our show we did recently with Wes with some of your suggestions. So I just want to hand the mic over to you for a minute. Yeah. Like, let's talk atrium character, stern character, you know, atrium, that kind of stuff. You yeah, go for it. So if Disney wants to go the distance, DCL will it. revive Hercules the musical with Hercules as the main show on that ship. They haven't done it in about 15 years. It'll be about 17 years between March 2008 when it stopped on the Wonder and when this one sails. But I like uh, Hercules and Hades is such a the villain of villains. Yeah, I love and Hades. It being the star... The, the advancement of the puppetry and all the things we've seen 
the Disney feeder company do over the past, you know, 15, 17 years with Beauty and the Beast and kind of what we're seeing out of Moana Frozen. and what they've done even with like yeah. Maximus. Can you imagine Pegasus on that stage? Oh, Pegasus. I, I, I would die, CT. I like, uh, first of all, I love Hercules, like the movie musical, right? It's fantastic. The music, the music is wonderful. And I, I mean, who doesn't love Megara? But Pegasus is the star in my mind. And you're exactly right. Maximus in Tangled is done beautifully. And all they got to do is add wings to him and he's Pegasus. So like the puppetry, I mean, they might have to add a second puppeteer to have to do, deal with the wings. That's the only thing. But it would be phenomenal. I could totally see them doing it. You're right. The advances are crazy. And they just need to like bring back the old show with maybe some updates. The yeah, other part that, other, yeah, the other st stuff that people are saying, and we, I saw this from multiple people online, and I know Tracy's saying it right here in our chat is the return of villains tonight. That's another show that was retired by I DCL. <laughs> You have that in your notes too. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. So that, that was a show that, that was beloved by DCL fans. I've seen it only on YouTube. I never saw it on the ship. Same with the Hercules. Um, but I think, I think both of those really, I mean, how do they not fit? Right. Plus like maybe a heroes unite deck party. I actually, I, uh, I have one other show cause most of them carry two shows. Yeah. Um, but I have what I want. You know, with the tinfoil hat, and I have what I think it will happen. Yeah. What I want is I would love to see Snow White. The timing is perfect. They're going to have a new live action movie. Oh, yeah. Just like they did with Beauty and the Beast when they launched it on the Dream. It was synergized with the success of the live action Beauty and the Beast that was done around that time. And I think there'll be new songs that will come from the movie, which will drive some excitement for it. But I think in reality, they're probably going to dust off the Little Mermaid and put it on the ship as well because Ursula is also a very powerful Disney villain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and they have Little Mermaid on the wish, right? So they they could just, that could be the second show. I think you're yep. right. I think it would be very easy to put Little Mermaid as the second show on the Destiny, but they've got to have a new show. But you're right. I mean, they could recycle an old one, but just update it. And that would be, in my mind, that would be a new show. Um, but yeah, so, I, so I don't, I, I don't, I don't hold on. I don't want to cut the theming discussion short here. I want to get right back to it. But there's been a couple of comments here in the thread about whether Fort Lauderdale can support LNG fueling. And I'll just say I quickly sort of went over and was looking and it seems like uh, they have plans to support that in the very, very near future. Uh, and so Port Everglades and Fort Lauderdale are gearing up for LNG because some other cruise lines have some ships coming that are based out of there that are LNG. So I don't know that they have the capability today. But by this time in 2025, I suspect they will. Uh, and that mm -hmm. may be part of the agreement that Disney struck with the port of uh, Fort Lauderdale to build their new terminal there is you will need to support LNG if you want us to move out of Miami. So I uh, just want to call that out. It may not have, have it today, but we know they have a port commitment to have one of these large ships down there and they're all LNG fueled. So so they're yeah. going to have well, to get The wish class is, yeah. to be clear. Yeah, so wish class. So yeah. wish, yeah. treasure, and destiny will all be LNG fueled. Can, uh, on the theme, on the theming side of things, can I knock out just one thing that I think is is just guaranteed based on this hallway slide? We've got Spider-Man and Black them. Panther. Uh, we have Spider-Man and Black Panther. <sighs> can I just call it now that Marvel's restaurant is going to be on the third ship? <laughs> and I was right. It is I the agree. animator's palette of the Wish class ships. Like that, yep. done. Like, yep. like, like I there, agree. No other explanation. Yeah. It's so funny can that we all had that same thought. Yeah, I totally agree. Can I hit a quick one on the doors here? Yeah. That's a fun one. I think we're going to see Edna Mode in the form of her having a fashion design studio that replaces Bippity Boppity Boutique. And they're going to make Ooh. kids superheroes on this ship. <gasps> oh, I oh love my it. God. I love that idea. I love that. That idea. is they can listen if, princesses, they can still do pirates just like it does yes. today. Yes. If they if will they're have the opportunity not doing, to look like Mickey. Yeah. If they're not doing this and they are watching, like they need to do this. Because I think this is this is like, yeah, this is not just gold. This is like Benjamins. Okay. This will bring in the Benjamins for sure. Like yeah, superhero costumes. It'll probably be a tea shop though. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that. But uh, 
By the way, by the way, Sam, can we get this on a T-shirt for you? Uh, no. Steve is saying Brian. Brian is correct. Uh, I think he's referencing the uh, the Marvel uh, prognostication I just gave. But uh, in general, I think that's an accurate statement. Yeah. So thank you, Steve. Yeah, yeah, the, the Marvel, the nineteen twenty three, I think, are givens. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. design of the buffet. It's really what the what the cocoa. Away. It's what the cocoa restaurant's going to be. Right. right? That's What's really going to be the that? question. Yeah. And what yeah. is going um, to be Pirates of the Caribbean themed? I think that's the other well, I like, big question. And I, think I like the suggestion from from Tracy that the would the pirate on the door be the the pub? I I mean, like when we talked to Wes, be. we talked to Wes recently. He was saying how much he'd love it if one of the pubs was like a Pirates of the Caribbean kind of themed, or one of the bars was. I think that I think it's a smart theme for a bar for sure. Could they mm-hmm. do? Let me just throw this out there, though. Wild speculation. Could they do a Pirates of the Caribbean uh, stage show? It's a pretty popular franchise. No. It's going to stay. No? It's still going to be. No, because we're like still. The classic Disney. Yeah. I don't think so. I think because we're going to yeah. still have a pirate night and a pirate deck show, right? We're going to have a pirate deck party, a pirate night. It's going to be like the one on The Wish. Um, but I, I think Wes's dream is going to come true, which is I think we're going. I agree with Tracy. I think we're going to have a Pirates of the Caribbean uh, bar. Uh, Steve is saying I like restaurants. Barbosa's lounge I have in my notes. Oh, so. I love Yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, Pirates Bar where Ale encompasses. Ag- agreed. So it's it's going to be yeah. like or like the what is that? The Para- is that the Periscope Pub on the yep. yeah. Treasure? Yeah, that's the one yeah. I'm thinking is going to is the one that's kind of prime for uh for pirate theming. Yeah. Can we finish yeah. talking about some of the pubs and lounges that we think are going to be around the ship yeah. since we're on that theming already? Yeah, I love um, that. Well, I can, I, can I ask cut. you a very specific? Can I ask you a very specific question on that point, Chris? Which is, yeah, uh, uh, haunted mansion. Do we think that the symbol of the haunted mansion on this door means they're going to repeat the haunted mansion bar on the? On, like, I would be very disappointed if they didn't differentiate one more time. Right? They have Star Wars hyperspace. They have haunted on mansion bar. Okay, I think it'll be something right. yeah. ship. I don't think it's going to be a bar. I think yeah. we didn't see a lot of repeated venues between when it came to lounges between, especially the major ones. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, if, Agreed. if there was one they were going to repeat, it would have been hyperspace, right? Like I don't see if Disney's willing to abandon hyperspace from ship to ship, they're definitely willing to abandon the haunted mansion. And I actually think, um, I think Gaston's bistro Ooh. is one we're going to see, right? It's a French, you know, brewery style kind of, I think that's a great idea. Bar. And then I actually like Mr. Toad's pub is the Disney deep cut. Like they did 20,000 leagues under the sea on the treasure. Yeah. I like something. I like a good British pub and it's themed after like Mr. Toad's wild ride and some of the characters from mm. there. And I they're done that. in classic, like gold or brass statues around in the pub. Oh, I would love that. I would. Uh, so I, I would love a, a Mr. Toad. Yeah, that would be amazing. I'm, I'm not so, I'm not so much with you on the Gaston, but I because but I think I think the Mr. Toad is a great idea. So where, how do we think Haunted Mansion figures into this? Because I will I, I have to confess at first glance, I'm looking at that going heroes and villains. How's the haunted, like, I mean, I guess the Haunted Mansion has, I don't, I don't, I just don't see it as a traditional hero and villain kind of story. And so I'm trying to figure out where it goes on the, on the ship. Any ideas that's, there? That's a tough one. Or? Maybe more in like a smaller venue, like a Nightingale mm-hmm. type venue. I don't, I don't know if the mm. piano bar is quite the right place to put it, but I just don't see them repeating that bar especially with no data on how much people go into it. Right. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's a little early to commit. I'm I, unless it's yeah. a good like corner to cut and design costs. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's a monetary reason to do it, but yeah. from watching it just doesn't them, fit the I, theme I, I don't though. Think... It, yeah, don't it doesn't fit the theme. Yeah. Uh, Ter- Taryn's asking, hold on. Taryn's asking if they announced the, the, the Nightingale's bar on the treasure. They have not, no. they have not actually, no. Uh, actually, we uh, when I saw that there was uh, like Disney news breaking today, I thought, oh, maybe they're going to announce the final bar, <laughs> the existing ship. No, let's give you a whole other one. There you go. Yeah. So no, I looked through the treasure stuff the right goes. before this to see if something changed. So. Yeah. So Josh is yeah. saying haunted mansion stateroom designs? Question mark. I think not. I'm just thinking like. I'm thinking, so you don't necessarily know what your stateroom design is going to be when you book your stateroom. And I think that there's probably some parents who would be a little, um, not happy if they had like very, very young kids and they were in a haunted mansion themed room. Not that haunted mansion is really scary. 
it's not, but maybe for the really little ones, I, they might, yeah, they might not like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if there's, the if there's one thing Karen's don't want is kids staying up. Brandy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. You get the eyes looking I also at don't you. Think and... It happens in the atrium or happens off the bow of the ship. Can we agree? Like, or the yes. back of the ship? Right? Agreed. The yeah. with, like, you're not going to see the Hatbox ghost back there. You would see them somewhere else. Agreed. I think we can also agree that the Luna Sarabi is not a location for that as well, right? Probably yeah. not because I don't that whatever that space is can't have that like intense level of theming. Yep. Um, and like there's not even room to put like wallpaper and you got to have the haunted mansion like wallpaper. Right. So it, it, yeah. is it a theme for the team club? Oh, that's a great idea. That's actually Ooh. a great idea. It They could definitely be that. That would be that would. And, and yeah, I'm not sure it would be in the younger kids spaces. Um, no. Uh, but I think in the teen or tween clubs, that definitely could be, there could be featured. Yeah. Can, or there could frankly go be on, like one of the cafes. Can I, can I go on a limb here? Uh, so I want to figure out what we think the Stern and Atrium characters might be. Yeah. Cause I don't know if we've landed on that. I, I think, I wonder if we might get a Stern of um, Hercules and Pegasus. Bow. Isn't it the bow? The Stern is the I, front of the That's what would my Stern no. characters were. No, Hercules and Pegasus. the opposite, Sam opposite bow Wait, the is the stern, front stern is the back bow is the front oh stern is the back okay sorry i screwed that up uh okay sorry wait you said who did you say it was going to be brian i think it could be pegasus. hercules yeah. riding Pe yeah. riding pegasus hercules riding about, pegasus yeah i don't know about riding pegasus but i i think we could see hercules and hades on the back of the ship mm, here's my here's my here, you don't think they'll put a villain they put captain no Hulk? i don't think yeah. i'm i, I wanted to know if they would put a villain as the atrium character. I that's that's where I, I agree. CT shaking his head for those who are listening to this after. I agree. I don't think so, but man, that would be kind of be kind of cool. I mean, it'd be a stake in the ground of the real battle of heroes and villains. Could they no. do something cool with the atrium where the characters change uh to reflect whether the ship is, you know, being a hero's versus a villain's moment, right? That could be interesting as well. Um, that but, could yeah. be interesting, like, or changes for a night that's villain's night on the ship, and they swap yeah. it out when people, you know, at night when they're, that would be really cool. That would be cool, would but be I don't really think cool. they're going to do it, because they ha the, atrium the atrium statue is not going to move. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I think we're going to see Hercules and Hades on the back of the ship. I think we're going to see... Like Ooh, Simba and Simba, Simba and Nala in the um in the atrium. I actually yeah, think it's Simba Linda. and maybe Timon and Pumbaa off somewhere off to the Ooh, side. To yes, Timon and Pumbaa like off the to mice. the side, like the mice. I totally agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah, Linda says it. Uh, I mean, we haven't we haven't talked about Ursula or Maleficent, who are like the ultimate villains and aren't even in the IP artwork uh, as of now. Which I've got to yeah. imagine they both are going to figure prominently. At some level, Disney is Disney's hitting hard on Cruella de Vil these days. Like, I know the Cruella movie. I love the Cruella movie. Let me be very specific. I love that movie. Um, but, like, I, the, like, she's here in the artwork. Like, how do we figure 101 Dalmatians is going to fit into this whole exercise? Like, So I have yeah. Spot of Tea. I have Spot of Tea. That's <laughs> a spot for the puppy. As a I think that'd be cute. That, yes, I think it's going to, I agree with you though. I think it could be like a little cafe or something like it could, you know, cause there, we've got, we've got those, tea. yeah, we've got those two different, um, like coffee bars. The cricket on the wish. one and what's the other one? I can't yes, remember. Um, so, well on the wish it's, uh, Pinocchio, um, wishing star and, uh, sword in the stone and then it's uh hey hey and cricket right. from mulan on the treasure so i yeah it definitely 101 dalmatians could fit or I, it also could play into uncharted adventure right they're gonna throw a bunch of yeah. different ip into Un uncharted adventure um so, possibly for this as well so to go back and answer brian's question i actually have that they're gonna do a villains character meet and greet like they do the princess greeting Yes. In the atrium, That's a good we one. go and see, That's and there'll one. be Gaston, Cruella, Jafar, Hook, and the Evil Queen are all easy characters that Disney has done before that play well. Uh, maybe even the stepsisters coming through and bickering. Yes. Um, 
And Cruella is uh, another possibility too for that. If kind I had of, my yeah. wish, if I had my wish, but I won't get it, they'd also have Madame Mim in there. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, I don't, I don't think you'll get Madame Mim. No. Um, but I, I totally <laughs> agree with your list. I would, I would just add Cruella as another rotational yep, Cruella, um, yep. one to that. that. Yeah. Steve's Steve's prediction, which I love, is Atrium Statue Hero go full Jack Sparrow. I think he's more of an anti-hero than a hero. Uh, he is an anti-hero. <laughs> I'm not quite hero. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, this is a great one. Um, uh, we've got uh, Cruella Champagne Bar, darling. I like it. Oh, that's a good like idea. It. Yeah, that's a yeah. really cute idea. And it would play into the piano like thing because uh, um, who, who's the 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 male character, the dog owner, whose name I'm forgetting? It's like it's like Richard Darling or whatever it is. Like oh, he plays yeah. the piano, right? And writes yes. music, so he can yep. have a little piano yep. bar on board, he right? Does. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He. That yeah. Every be, adult you know. will be humming the uh, Dalmatian Plantation on the way back to their stateroom at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or they'll or they'll be humming Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, th- uh, I like Taryn is agreeing with the villain meet and greet. I, I love that mm-hmm. idea, CT. I think that would be fantastic. And and it it doesn't even have to necessarily replace like the the princess meet and greet. It could just be like an additional one as well. Um, It'll be one of those ticketed meet and greets that you catch yes. as you're fighting Disney IT. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Which you is have, also you have a to villain. sign up for. <laughs> that yeah, is surely awesome. will be a part of this show. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then right, kids' what club we, spaces, what we, right? We well, haven't we haven't talked. Oh, well, I mean, but yeah, but they recycled the kids' club between the last they, two ships. Like, do we really think they're going to do something different this time around? I mean, I'm just saying, if they don't have another place to that Marvel's going to be besides the Marvel restaurant, it's going to also be in the kids' club, right? They just might rotate which characters are more prominently featured. That's the only thing I think. If they yeah. don't do the Edna mode. Uh, um, bippity boppity boutique, they'd be crazy. But also, I have down that Edna Mode would replace the Mickey and Minnie Captain Deck area to potentially do that same thing with the kids because oh, incredible! Yeah. Edna makes the costume that matches the hero, and kids can pick what their superpower is, and that would be a really great space for them uh, in the in in the um, the kids area. But to, to Brian's point, they haven't changed that between the other two ships, so. You'd be you'd be betting against the odds to predict that they would change it again. So yeah, I just I want to put this comment up really fast. Uh, I can't find the original comment from Captain Disney, but uh, Josh McHenry is saying at Captain Disney, I like your haunted mansion restaurant idea. It could be like the ballroom scene. I I, I love that. I mean, and, and it would just be kind of a natural expansion of what they're doing with the bar. Um, it could be really interesting. I just don't know the show aspect of it. Right, that's the. Mm-hmm. That's the part where I struggle. I mean, if they could get a hat box ghost onto this ship at dinner <laughs> for part of a show, like I think people would lose their mind. So um, I it's actually an interesting have for idea. that rush for that restaurant. I actually either have Asian cuisine with a Mulan theme mm-hmm. or Mulan does a show and she is definitely a hero. Yes. When you talk about Disney heroes and there's definitely villains in that one. And then um, the other one I have, if not that, it's a good opportunity to do a Moana show with Moana and Maui, and then the room gets dark, representing Tafiti later is another great opportunity for them. And oh, they match yeah. up the I've cuisine been... really well. Whereas with Haunted Mansion, it's stale bread and <laughs> right? not, to, <laughs> not, not, not to go down on that idea, but but how do you how do you how do you lend in cuisine with that theming? Because they did well, it so I'll, well with Coco I'll give you and they did it so well with Frozen. Yeah. I'll give you a roadmap for it. I think there's a way to take what they did on the Galactic Star Cruiser and the food that they did there and kind of play around with the colors and textures and presentations to be like, you know, the, the this is the food of the dead, you know, kind of thing. Now, it might not look appetizing, which could turn off a larger audience who's not into it. So maybe not. I love the Moana theme. Um, I wonder, if, like, I always thought it would be great to have a luau at sea and do something with Moana. I'm not sure they'll do it though. Cause they're going to have the Moana stage show on the treasure. And so, mm-hmm. I mean, while an easy extension, I'm just not sure that that's where they'll head. And I wonder about the Mulan restaurant, because I think that would go naturally on the adventure. Right. So yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I, I, yeah. There is some cross, yeah. you know, when we look at like frozen on one ship and the frozen uh, yeah. adventure dinner show on another one. Um, uh, but to yeah. the, all I'm going to say about the Haunted Mansion cuisine is thank God for those Mickey chicken tenders. 
right? <laughs> like the kids are not going to eat off that menu in that yep. restaurant. They won't, the they case. won't get that. They won't get that no. adventurous. Like they just, they just won't. Um, yeah. A couple of comments I want to throw up is some good ideas here. Um, I love this activities to choose your destiny, whether hero or villain. I, I, I love, love that. that. If there was some like gameplay aspect on board where you, you were playing for the heroes or the villains, I mean, maybe an extension of um, the uncharted adventure game that they have on board already. Uh, I also, I love this. Yes. Big hero. Say, hero is in the name. Hero <laughs> is the name of a main character. Oh, I would love this. I would love this. Even if it was yes, like a but he dies. fireworks. Yeah, no, not hero. <laughs> hero doesn't die. And Baymax. Oh, sorry, it's the, brother. it's the brother. It's the brother. It's the brother. I'm, think, I'm, I'm getting about? the names mixed up. What are you talking about? So I have him uh, riding on the robot's back as a secondary atrium character. So I like that. Or actually, I love that as a as a as a um, hanging off the back of the ship. I I love I like, like you know Baymax with hero on his back like. I kind of, yeah, I kind of love that. The Dumbo fits, Baymax fits. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, and I love the, I love the idea of maybe having a fire, like a, a hero and villains fireworks show. They're already at Disneyland doing Baymax flying around. Like, so, I mean, I yes. just wonder if they could get Baymax on the, you know, on the zip line that cuts across the two funnels and, you know, do something with that. Like that could be, that could be really fun and, and kind of we, interesting. I, I'd love to see. We have, more they Baymax. already <laughs> have the red and blue color palette on the deck of a ship yeah. lit up at night. And every time I'm out there, I wonder why hasn't Disney done a Star Wars deck show? Yeah. Why hasn't yeah. there been the red and blue lightsabers in the night and the fireworks going off? They they right, did in, do in that for show. yeah, they did it for Star Wars Day at Sea. They they did have one. Um, but let's talk about Star Wars because they do mention in one of the one of the statements, they do mention Star Wars, well, but they yeah. don't say well, let me, what let me... Star Wars is going to do be. Yeah, let me set this up for one second. I also just wanted to say JD has a good comment here about the hallway with the doors. Does it mean that each floor will be themed? I think irrespective of the doors, that's how they've done the treasure and the wish that like alternating. There's like three or four different themes and they alternate them by deck. And yep. there's like one theme dedicated to concierge. I don't know that they would do to the earlier comments that we had. I don't know that they'll do like Spider-Man themed rooms. Like I just don't know how they pull that off in like a tasteful way so much as they tend to pick like a movie like uh like a hundred million dollars yeah 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 a little um, bit friendly so to your point yeah to your point uh sam so there was some suggestion because the press release and some of the other materials don't mention star wars that maybe they were abandoning star wars for this ship which people were disappointed about because star wars is frankly the ultimate heroes and villains movie yes. at some level and so uh, I want to quell some of that. Thanks to my buddy, uh, Steve, who's been commenting throughout the show, uh, who found on Disney's website under Sale with Disney, there is now a page for the Destiny. If you go there, they expressly mention Star Wars as one of the IPs. So S Star Wars will figure into this ship in some way. How that's done, we we don't know don't yet. Know. I'm fingers crossed. It's not a repeat of the hyperspace lounge, but I don't know, Chris. Did you have any ideas around Star Wars on this ship? You know, just the deck show. I thought the deck yeah. show, uh, and and they've got Disney has a uh, has already laid out the the like give us uh, uh, Leia, Minnie, and Skywalker, Mickey back. You know, yes. to be there and appear in that show as well because they've already done that. It's all. That's all shelved uh, uh, intellectual property that they haven't used in forever. So I, that's the place where I fit Star Wars into it, um, especially since I didn't think they'd repeat the bar. I didn't mm -hmm. think they, you know, again, the Luna, uh, that place is there's a there's a very specific way you theme that that isn't conflicting with the rest of the ship and the flow of the ship that you really you've got to be. You got to be careful what IP you put into that place. So it feels like there's some love given to something, but it's not too much. So. Um, yeah. I just didn't find a place for Star Wars other than that because of the way the kids clubs are. Rob, Rob wants the sublight lounge, make it happen. Rob, I've said we it will. so many times on the show like that. Just go gut the thing on the star cruiser and put it onto the ship. Uh, yeah. Like it would be a great, great thing. I, I don't personally don't want it on this ship. I think they should, they should remodel the existing hyperspace lounge to be closer to sublight. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, I, I love like this those... comments. 
I love this comment where it said in the video, they went heavy with Hercules. Could we see a dining room where the muses perform and Phil teaches the kids to be heroes? Like, you know, like the, uh, the, that the would praise. be a great, uh, yeah. that would be a great yeah. alternative. If they don't use Hercules for a stage show, I think you're right. That could be, it definitely could be a restaurant. I, I love, um, both Steve and Rob were making comments about, you know, Luke and Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, perhaps dueling as an atrium statue, right? Like with their, you know, lightsaber dueling. I like that. I also kind of like the idea of them hanging off the back of the ship. So who knows? Yeah. That feels weird to me. Like, why would they ever be hanging off the back of the ship? <laughs> why would any that character be hanging off the? Why would Dumbo see, be well, hanging no, off the back of the ship? You know, Go Goofy I could see hangs Yoda off the back of the ship and lightsaber. Yeah, Yo Yoda, Baymax. Yeah, or not Baymax. Sorry, yeah. BB-8. Yeah, yeah. I could see BB-8. BB I could see. Because if I think about Star Wars, you see off the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if I think about Star Wars, like the droids are the ones sitting outside the ships in space, right? So like I could, yeah. I could kind of see that. And like, they usually do something tasteful, right? Like, yeah. like it's not that the character's just there. They're usually doing something to the stern of the ship. So you could see like the droids there repairing the back of the ship in some way. Like that could, that could be kind of cool for sure. All right. Well, CT, what have we missed? I know you took some copious notes of ideas for this yep. ship uh, before the show. I and so I want to, I want to give you a chance to get through that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think for that uh, Luna Saraba, I actually like the Mandrigal Villa. Oh, I love and as that you look idea. Up, you see the little bit oh, of light great. theming that you see for the different that's rooms great. as you look up the wall. So Mandrigal Villa, Disney loves Encanto right now. Its yes. fans love Encanto right now. I think that's a really good like lay in for that. Um, I also had Black Panther heavy in the Marvel dining experience, which is not going anywhere. Um, I like a Lion King themed splash pad for the kids on deck. Yeah. You know, you get Timon and Pumbaa out there and a couple of grubs and the water shooting everywhere. And I yeah. think kids are going to eat that up. You know, it's easy to slide down a lion's back. Um, but I, it I could also could be, theming. but it could also be Moana and you could have Hey, Hey, and what's the pig's name? Pooey. Pooey, yeah. So I kind of I I like your idea, but I I also think you could see it them do the same with them with Moana's sidekick characters. And then just this kind of I guess this isn't really ship specific, but it came to me. But I want to see Lorcana have more of a presence in the preteen area. I think yeah. that there's a there's an age there that's digging that card game, and I would like to see them embrace it and create some opportunities for people to get together. Could, I guess even if there's, there's a guy over here who but. there's a guy over here who's really embraced Lorcana as I'm well. I'm building so. decks. I'm building, <laughs> but 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 yeah. If anyone wants to talk deck building, reach out uh, because I need some pointers. But uh, I, what I would love to see, given the Lorcana tie-in, which I love, is could they could they somehow craft a space on the ship that maybe sells Lorcana cards? Uh, you know, like, like that would be a great opportunity outside of some of this like high end tables. retail that they have and has some tables where you can play Lorcana. Like what, like yep. that, that seems like a no brainer to me. Uh, Even if they just take like a that. venue and have where the table just is laid out as a Lorcana play set. Right. I've been playing yep. with my nephew online. We've been playing over FaceTime because it's something we, an activity we can have together. So That's um, awesome. shout out to Zane. Um, That's great. Hi, Zane. But uh, he's been. He's been uh, he's been getting into it, but I, I think there's a I, I see how it is when he plays and the that age group just loves it. I I know plenty of adults that love it. I see some of that stuff online. So yeah, make a Lorcana place. Um, and oh, then, uh, I, the last I love one I have. In, I love this. I love this from Rob. What about a Jabba's Palace um, villain themed atrium with Hansel? I would actually take this <laughs> and say, what about a Jabba's Palace villain themed bar? Right, like yeah. that that yeah. that could be interesting. That could be interesting. And then the last one I have is just the, they've talked a little bit about a fourth boat in this class. And if the adventure is successful, that boat will be built for Asia. <laughs> yeah. So enjoy yeah. this one because this is going to be the one we get, or they'll move one of these over there. Right. And yeah. the next one will come here, but um, that, that that's all I had in my notes. So I think I we've it. hit just about yeah. everything in there for theming. Yeah. Well, I think we have just about exhausted our ability to prognosticate, and I'm going to go with uh, we probably are 80 percent wrong, and uh, we will need more I'm information. I'm going to say 90 percent. I'm going to say we're 90 percent wrong. 90, but I want to. I want to. 
But I want to give a shout out to AJ, who's watching us from a Delta flight. Um, so awesome. it's pretty awesome that like we can be streaming on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. I don't call it X. I'm calling it Twitter. And we have people watching on airplanes. So that's like just like a testament to technology. Disney, maybe take a note <laughs> on the tech. <laughs> Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Well, and he and he did notice that I'm wearing my uh, Disneyland half spirit jersey. This is the Magic Key spirit jersey from the Disneyland half. Yeah, I see you're wearing. Is that Wine and Dine? No, the Dream of Europe 2000. Oh, the Dream of Europe. Sorry, I can't. It's your your oh. shirt is small on my screen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. One la one last question. One last question. Rapid fire. True rapid fire here because we actually have to go get our son from math. Uh, but Linda wants to ask prognostication on the tower suite so real quick your guess as to theme for the tower suite and i'm just gonna go on a limb and say it'll be 100 percent wrong because the tower suite doesn't seem to align to the theming of any of these ships so um sam what's your guess on theming of the tower suite um i'm gonna go with lion king lion king ct what do you got he's thinking i'm gonna do Zootopia. Ooh, I love that. Ooh, I love that. I love that a lot, actually. <laughs> Tower right, Suite is a prison. Those have been Steve that way. I, I'm going to go Zootopia. Yeah. Tower, Steve is <laughs> saying Tower Suite is, is a prison. Oh, from, no, no. Oh, it's, it's the, the first, fucking Pirates it's of the, the first escape room. Right? Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Steve says Tower Suite is a prison. I, it's an escape room. It says you pay, you know, ungodly amounts of money and then you got to figure out how to get out. How to get out. Yeah. <laughs> there'll be a, there'll be a spot where you can try to lure people into letting you out of your room over there by the, uh, yeah. By that oh yeah. The dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We do, we do All have right, a comment well, from Kent there saying more Disney shops and less jewelry and watch shops. We agree with you, but DCL doesn't agree with you. So sorry, Kent. I bet we're going to see whatever we have on the, on the wish we're going to see on the treasure and on the destiny just just exactly carbon copy there must from the be shops. good returns on that That's they, must. they must they must make good, good money returns. on those diamonds yeah. yeah 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 oh this is okay we got to end the show on this steve says it's our suite you can check, <laughs> check in but you can in. never leave <laughs> i love it i love it all right we got to leave it there <laughs> There will be many more shows about the treasure, about the destiny, about the adventure. And as we get I'm more information, it'll be great. Off. It'll be great to see what Disney supplies us with. For now, I just want to say, CT, thank you so much. You jumped in. We had these announcements this morning. I said to Sam, we should try to do a live show tonight. You reached out and said you'd love to wear the tinfoil hat and get on with us. And and you you just came on last minute. You killed I appreciate it. You, you killed it, CT. Taking the time. Love it. Love all your great ideas. I have, I hope Disney is out there listening. Uh, but thank you so much for taking the time to be with us tonight. Let me, let me say that. And then for everyone out there watching, this is a special live episode. We will be back with our regular live episode this Monday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, talking sailing, tips and tricks for sailing with kids on Disney Cruise Line. We've got a real expert joining us. Uh, trips with tykes is coming on to t uh, leslie from just trips with tykes is coming on to talk to us about that so thank you out there for listening everybody and watching uh live with us leaving your comments and questions if you enjoyed the show it really helps us a lot if you hit the subscribe button and the like button on youtube if you're watching there otherwise we will see you next time and uh can't wait for the discussion then so thanks everybody for watching we super super appreciate it <laughs> Oh, <laughs>